everyone. This is Sally Rogerson for SR Education. Good evening. Happy New Year to you all. Thank you so much to Hairbrain for having me and allowing me to start the new year off with you all. Um, I would like to introduce, before we go any further, uh, one of my educators. This is Brad Walker. Come on in. Uh, Brad is going to be over on the side and he will be taking any questions. Uh, if there's anything you want to ask me, technique, um, you know, anything, whether it's about your career or the industry, I am open to any questions. So Brad is going to be able to uh, share anything with me. So feel yeah. free, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Brad, for supporting me tonight. Uh, what we're doing today is graduation on curly hair. I think when you're working on curly hair, obviously there's many, many different ways to cut hair. A lot of people like to work on dry hair when it's curly, and I have no problem with that. Sometimes I like to do that as well. But personally, uh, at the moment, I really enjoy cutting hair when it's wet. Again, there's lots of philosophies about cutting curly hair. Uh, my philosophy is if I'm cutting it wet, then I like to cut it very precisely with a lot of tension. So you can see I'm using my uh, Wires Park SR Education comb, of course. What else would I be using? And I'm actually combing with quite tight tension. I'm working palm to palm. And my sections are actually starting in the middle. You'll see that I left all of this hair out at the bottom on purpose. I'm going to deal with that afterwards. And I actually started here and just went through with vertical diagonal sections. If we revert back to our foundational um, theory, then vertical sections tend to remove more weight. And so I'm using a vertical diagonal. Diagonal sections work with graduation really well. And what I'm doing is actually setting in my angle of graduation in this middle portion of the hair first before I go into the bottom area. So what I'm trying to imagine is where do I want to build weight? This is uh, Mandy, my model. She has beautiful hair. She's one of my house models. And she has a really, really round occipital bone. And so it's very prominent. So I don't really need to put loads of weight on top of it because she already has, um, you know, a quite a protruding occipital bone. So she doesn't need loads and loads of weight. When you're cutting curly hair and you are putting tension on the hair like I am, then you will find that the hair is going to spring back more. And I quite like that because it gives me a more soft and diffused kind of feeling with the hair. So I actually enjoy cutting curly hair with tension, anticipating and knowing that the hair is gonna shrink up a little bit more. So as you can see, I'm really working with the hair, getting my fingers in there, seeing what it's doing, how is the hair reacting. You will generally find that curly hair springs up differently in different areas. My sections have been vertical diagonal, and I'm going all the way through to the front with this technique. I've not started in the nape because I want to sit my angle and build my weight on the most round part of the head shape first. I don't always cut like this, but I find it is quite exciting and it allows you later on to be able to tailor and decide how tight in the nape you're going to go later on. I'm keeping my sections more vertical, slightly diagonal as I come through to the front because I want to get rid of quite a lot of this hair. Later on, this front area is going to lay down over the top of it. So if you're just joining us, thank you so much. I'm Sally Rogerson. Uh, my hair education company is uh, SR Education. You can find out a little bit more about us if you're interested in classes or anything that we do on sallyrogerson.com. And again, thank you so much to Hairbrain for having me on. And uh, this is my wonderful model, Mandy. She's been working with us quite a lot recently. And uh, we're here in Scottsdale at my academy. So that's a little bit about where we are. And what 
I'm doing is working with a short graduation on Cody Head. We got a lot of hellos from Stephen Statland. Oh, Steven hi Stephen! Stephen uh, over there in New Jersey. Great. Hope everyone's having a wonderful new year. Who else have we got, Brad? We got Jesse Fry. Oh, yeah. Hey, Jesse. Carolinas, right? Jesse Fry is actually one of my um, other SR education educators. She actually does classes for SR education over in Charlotte. So if any of you are over on the East Coast, uh, keep that in mind. Not just me that cuts hair for SR education or colors hair. We have a whole team, which is really exciting, isn't it? It used to just be me, Brad, all the time. <laughs> but now it's nice because I have people to share it with. <laughs> So all I'm doing is I'm combing the hair quite tight. Now sometimes um, <clears throat> I'll cut hair with very loose tension. And that's really why you choose the comb that you want to use. You know, if I'm doing tighter tension, then I'm gonna choose two tighter um, kind of comb types. Sometimes I'll, I'll actually cut with super loose tension and a really big wide teeth comb. I'm not a hair cutter that just likes to pigeonhole themselves. You know, we also do amazing razor cutting classes with SR Education. Uh, I'll cut hair dry, wet. I don't like to pigeonhole myself. I like to do whatever I feel like at the time. And so I think that, you know, to me, there is no one way to cut hair. There is no one way to color hair. I think if you know technique, you know, because you get bored, don't you, in the salon? You don't want to cut hair the same every day. Like, I would try and cut hair with you know, a lot of different ways from the front, from the back, just to keep it interesting, right? right? So I hope you're all doing really good. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this evening. Thank you to Hairbrain. I hope you're all feeling great after your New Year's Eve celebrations. And um, it's really nice to start the year out with something like this, to get inspired, to have a few techniques that you can take into the salon and to also I think talk about trends right because I think trends at the moment you know we're seeing a lot of stronger hair cutting and in our classes we get this a lot we, a lot of people are saying to us um, I've been doing color classes for you know years two three years and now I want to get back into how to cut hair so cutting hair with a lot of technique is the thing that's in fashion right now, isn't it? So I've cut this side already, and just in the middle, you'll notice I haven't cut this bottom area yet. Now the hardest thing on graduation is balance. So a little tip, what I tend to do is I take a strip of hair from the first side that I cut. I'll section off and clip away that first side. I've just got this strip of hair here, and then I take all of that hair over to my other side and I'll use that um, and that is going to be as my guide, right? So I'm just dumping down, I'm actually leaving, uh, I'm using a leave-in treatment spray, I uh, love this Formula 18 and it's amazing to cut with on curly hair because you get a bit of moisture as you're cutting. So now, my sections are going to be the same as the other side, which was more vertical diagonal. And what I have is I actually have um, a guideline. I'll just turn around so you can see a bit more. I actually have a guideline from the other side. So you can see the hair, that strip of hair there that I took from the first side is now my guideline. Can you just pump it out for me, Brad, a little bit? Thank you. I actually did my hard side first. I'm right-handed, so I did my right side first. Put the brake on, that's it. Uh, so that I could show you the other side a bit easier. So now you can see my guideline. So that tells me what to cut. Remember, I'm not cutting the underneath yet. Let's talk about the advantages of using this technique rather than starting in the nape. It is a little bit more advanced because 
because obviously you have to feel like you, you're seeing what you're doing um, and you're understanding where you're building the weight. But the advantages of doing it this way are a client that has very tricky growth patterns in the nape area, maybe they want like a high graduation in the um, above the occipital bone, but they have you know either a very high hairline or a very low hair hairline or a very low hairline or just a hairline that kicks out a lot. So if I actually start here, I can later on go down to that bottom area and make a decision how tight I want to go, or how much hair I want to leave, dependent on that hairline. Love her Formula 18. Yeah, Formula 18 is the bomb. .com. All right. I love it. I love. I use the uh, styling products, shampoo, conditioners. I mean, I would drink it if I could. I can't even tell you. It's all I use at home. Like it's just the best. Yeah. Uh, we also have a question about what type of tension and why. Very good. Great question. Thank you for that about tension. Um, so tension is very interesting. I use different types of tension on different hair and I also use it to achieve different results. On curly hair, if I pull the hair tighter as I am, then I'm going to end up getting something that's a little bit more diffused and soft when it dries because it's going to spring more and actually end up diffusing. I'm not going to be left with a, a line. Um, Sometimes on hair, if I'm working on, let's say, the crown or a difficult hairline, then I'll back off from the tension and hardly even hold it, and I'll, I'll be using this or even a bigger um, comb, right? Yeah. So I hope that answered that question. Thank you so much. Tension is a really important thing. I do not cut hair all the time. We have another question about when your next class is. Oh, my gosh. My next class is, we have a lot of classes um, all over the place. We are based here in Scottsdale in Arizona. We have an academy here. Uh, we do advanced training classes. We also do teacher training. And we are starting cosmetology yeah, in January. And it's going to be a very different cosmetology program. It's um, going to be starting, first of all, with uh, filming video, editing, social media, photography, and then you learn how to cut hair. So you learn how to market yourself first, and you learn how to build that eye. Um, our next classes are Sunday here. Uh, we have foundation coming up. We also have a foundation class um, in Charlotte with Jesse Fry. We have classes every single weekend all over the US. Um, you can find them all at sallyrogerson.com. You can always email us as well, and we'll help you out personally. But the big thing we have coming up, Bradley, is Thrive. So I also own a hair show, and it's called Thrive Sessions. And it's very small, it's about 200 people, and it's all about hands-on. Because there's not very many hair shows you can go to where you can actually cut hair. Uh, color hair and take something home and use it, right? Thrive is coming up 19th to 20th of January and it's here in downtown Phoenix. Be there or be square, right? <laughs> and, uh, Jessie says she's excited to teach on Sunday in Charlotte. Yes, yes, and she is teaching modern salon haircut. So it's full, unfortunately, sold out in about a week. <laughs> um, yeah, she's an amazing teacher. And uh, yeah, so any of you people that want to go to Jesse's class in Charlotte, uh, we we'll think we're going to put some more dates in soon. It's up out there. Yes, it's really happening there at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, cool. And you know, I can't get out to the East Coast all the time, so we have to we have to have someone holding down the fort, right? Right. We have another question yes. about your section. How come uh, you're choosing? section on the top rather than the normal portion. Very good. Um, so your section patterns, uh, very quick, quick bit of theory on there, but our section
section on the top is a triangle. The triangle has gone below the crown. So if you look at the cone, the round of the crown or the apex of the crown is up here. I've chosen to go underneath the crown on purpose because we have a lot of swirl in that crown. I'm probably going to disconnect it a little bit and then when it shrinks up visually, I want it to end up looking correct. So a great question. It's also going to disconnect. So the bigger that section is at the top, the more obvious it will be. The um, smaller it is, the less obvious. A horseshoe is always your go-to and that usually sits uh, really well on any haircut. A triangle, if you're going to disconnect, it will disappear and blend your disconnection in, so it's very useful. Um, a square or a rectangle is going to really give you a lot of weight across the back and leave you corners, so you have to make sure that that's what you want. Nothing is done randomly, Brad, right? You know that. No. Okay, now obviously you could leave it like this, um, which is kind of cool. If I was doing a photo shoot or something, I might go and do something like that. But that's not what I'm looking for today. I'm actually going to um, just put a little bit more of this in. I'm actually going to go in and graduate and connect all of this. So it's going to go in pretty tight and get rid of some of that back hair. We also um, pre colored Mandy's hair as well. She was very red. You've probably seen her on my Instagram. Um, I have a new Instagram, by the way, as well, so we're not going to be posting on our old one. We're going to Sally Rogerson Official is our new one. Yes, uh, but you might have seen her with very red hair before. We're just slowly trying to get a bit lighter. So you can see here I'm using the top hair that I've graduated as my guideline, and then I'm choosing with my finger angle how tight I want to go in or how much length I want to leave around the outlines. So again, this is dependent on what you want it to look like. Number two, it could be how strong is that hairline. Because if it's springy, you might want to leave a bit more hair there. So now I'm going to be coming through with diagonal sections and I'm going to be moving forward with them. If you pivot, you'll end up with too much lump hair there. So I'm going to be moving through with the same section as I go and then bringing the hair, connecting to the top, because my guide is the hair that I've already cut up there, and then I'll start to move down and use the previous section as a guide. I'm a right-hander, so I have to be very conscious and sure to be pushing my weight and traveling to the right, so my weight is on my right foot and my right leg, and I am encouraging my body to push my fingertip in and not stand on my left leg and push my fingertip out because that's when I get the problem with the balance of being long on the right side. A lot of stuff that we teach, as you know, Brad, is all about body position. And if you get your hands in your body position right, life's easy, isn't it? Most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> getting a lot of love from Ohio, Ben Michael Swan. Nice, hello. Bennett said hi. Rick Bennett. Rick. Hi, Rick. My good friend, Rick Bennett. I'm really hoping to see you at Thrive in a couple of weeks. And uh, I've known Rick for many, many years. He has a fantastic school um, over in Oklahoma. Really amazing school. Hi, Rick. Lawrence Young said hi, too. Hi, Lawrence. Really nice to hear that he's on. Okay, so I'm going all the way down and all the way through. Again, it's just connecting and I'm leaving a bit of hair in that bottom area and then I can decide how I feel. Do I want to carve my name into the bottom? Do I want to scissor over comb it off? Do I want to leave it loose? No right or wrong. It's your decision. You're the designer. Everybody in a lineup of 10 might do a very different outline, right? And that's okay. And that's what we teach in all of our classes. We'll teach you the fundamentals of how to get through the haircut, but we also teach you that it doesn't have to look a certain way. It has to be a reflection of your community, your clients, your style. So you can see my shape developing right now. I'm just gonna let it dry as I go along and I'll be doing that outline afterwards, okay? I've also prepped the hair 
Um, I've also prepped it and I've put some of the volumizing root mousse in there as well. And I'm cutting with that arm. Okay, I'm going to my other side. And <clears throat> going this way, vertical diagonal section. Let's see if we can make it work for the camera, otherwise I'll move around. We good? That's good job. So you can see now I'm just following my guide, using my guide from my other side. You know, also, this is a really great haircut to use asymmetrically. You can leave a piece out behind the ear. There's a million things that you could do to play around with this haircut. I just remember my days of being in the salon, and sometimes you're very grateful for those clients who come in religiously, and you've had them for 20 years, but, you know, we need different ways of approaching how to cut their hair, otherwise we can get a Stagnant, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Which is something I actually picked up a lot in the teacher training class that we've taken. Yeah. It really helps you know, evolve that mind. Well, I think, you know, they always say that you don't really know something until you teach it, right? Right, totally. Because um, you surprise yourself at how much you do know when you actually try and pass something on. Yeah. Uh, my background is with uh, Vidal Sassoon, and that's something that Vidal always would say it would encourage people to share, uh, share their information, share their knowledge, and teach somebody and pass something on right. instead of holding something to your chest. You know, That's something I'm very thankful for. But you, you get a lot more out there, don't you? Definitely. Any tips on disconnection on curly hair? Very good. From uh, Tony quite... Sadiq. Oh, hi, Tony. Um, Tony and I have known each other for many, many years on social media but I've never met, so one of these days we'll meet each other. <laughs> um, yes, uh, tips on disconnection with curly hair. I think you have to realize that um, it's going to shrink up, the hair is going to change, so sometimes I will maybe disconnect um, a little bit bigger. Uh, often I choose to disconnect more on curly hair because if I disconnect uh, and choose a smaller amount, then often it can look just like a lump or it can look like a mistake. Um, also, disconnection on curly hair, I think, has to really reflect the pattern of the curls. So, for example, you will find um, that curly hair is often not a regular patterned curl all over the head, right? So you'll often get curls that are tighter in that middle back area. Sometimes it's straighter in the underneath. So you get multi-textured hair. So I always try and make sure that I disconnect the really curly areas more. And um, that's really important. Where you place your disconnection, I think is everything. But you have to read the patterns of the curl and try and just go with it. Not be too obsessive. Try and use your eyes a little bit more, if that makes sense. Totally. Hope that helped. I'm very technical, but I'm also very loose at the same time, if you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'll put a technical shape in like that, and then after that, I'm all visual, you know? Um, on curly hair, it starts to gather a little bit here, and especially if you're intending like I am on putting that hair over the top. This hair here can get very heavy uh, when you lay it down from the front view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in and I'm just going to take this corner out here because this hair is going to fall over it. It'll make it less um, big from the front profile later on. So I'm going to come through almost like a round graduation and just come through and take a little bit of this corner off from here so that it lays a bit better. And also sometimes it gets a bit frizzy around there, doesn't it? So I'm just taking that corner out. I'm going to bring this hair forward, lift it up. Obviously, the more I lift it, the softer it's going to be. I'm not looking for it to be super hard. The color's working really nicely. It's a, we did a bleach. We did Formula 18 bleach lightener, they like to call it, right? Yeah. I'm English. We call everything bleach. <laughs> Bleached it. Um, and then our toner is half vanilla, half blush. Again, that blush toner is like everything to me. I put it on so many people. 
but it's really pretty, isn't it? Yep. Super shiny. So lots of love. Um, Dana's also agreeing. She's so surprising. So it's so surprising to learn and grow through teaching. Are we having any classes? Oh teacher my god, training? yes. Teacher training, teacher training with SR Education is our hottest ticket. Uh, we used to do one class a year. I think we're now on like three a year or something. It's nuts. We have a three month one coming up in Charlotte. Um, I want to say it's in March, but Jesse might be able to help me with that um, off the top of my head. Right, yeah. We have a brand new 12 month mentorship starting here in Scottsdale in January, in like a, a couple of weeks, something like that. Cool. Uh, we'll probably start another one later on in the year, but we're literally on um, waiting list kind of only on those 12 month ones, because I think there's just been this really big explosion of people wanting to learn how to teach. Yeah. I was never taught how to teach. I was just making it up as I went along, you know what I mean? Wow. Yeah, and I did a lot of big failures, and. You know, had a lot of moments that didn't work, but I prefer to actually teach people how to teach because that's what we should be doing. Yeah. None of this watch me do as I do, right. actually verbally explain how to do something. Right. Yes. But a lot of people need help just getting organized, don't they? Yes. Verbally, you know. Uh, we have another question about texture and if you were using it on someone with finer hair that straightens it. Yes. A different comb. A different comb. Um, very good question. Again, there's a, 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 an endless argument or discussion, as it were, and I agree, I agree with both sides. Let's imagine the scenario. Let's imagine a client that comes in and only ever wears their hair curly. I totally get that someone would do it dry. And, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but what about the client that wears their hair straight and curly? That is the problem. To me, on that client, I would always do it technically. Um, so when they blow dry it out straight, it looks great. Right. Even if it was fine or thick, that wouldn't matter to me. Um, so that would be my thing. Is to I, I like to get a strong technique in there because it looks great curly or straight. Right. Tension-wise, again, if I was cutting it dry, I would probably hardly even use my comb. I'd be like no tension or loose tension. Um, wet. I'm pulling it quite a lot on purpose, which a lot of people don't agree with, and that's fine. It's just what I feel like, right? Um, so now we've decided to actually work on this kind of longer front feeling. So how we're going to do that is remember I have a big triangle through here. It stops underneath my crown on purpose because the crown's quite springy and I might need to leave a little bit more length there. So there's many, many different ways that I can connect this top area in. If you want to take a lot of weight out of it, you can actually connect it through here and go through and layer it. If you want to keep more weight in it, like a client that had more fine hair, then I would kind of over direct it back and keep more density in the middle. Uh, for me, I'm just going to um, probably just do a little bit of channeling because she has a lot of thick hair through there and I would like to get a lot of different lengths in there. So I'll just very loosely channel it, but it's still going to be technical. So can I get another clip? I keep giving you them and then I want them back. I'm like Mariah Carey. Bring me some white doves. I want blue M&Ms. All right, here we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through with diagonal sections like that and then my first section I'm going to bring across and use my guide from this side and just very simply cut on a big angle short along. The main reason I'm doing this is because I want to layer through the hair and we want to get some of that old colour out and also it's just very dense through there. Then I'm going to take my next section and I'm just gonna leave it out, so I'm not gonna cut it at all. Then I'll take my next section, and again, I will connect this over to this side. So I'm just gonna connect all the one side. There's many, many different ways to channel hair. Channeling originally comes from, you know, kind of the late 70s and the 80s. It was a little bit more obvious in the 80s. It was orange and black and maybe perm on one side. And, so I'm just leaving one out. So I'm cutting every other section. What this is going to do is it's going to give mini little disconnections 
And in curly hair, to me, it just gives a few little spaces for curly hair to breathe because curly hair tends to stick to each other and curl around the curls. And so you often find it can start to stick together a little bit lumpy and it doesn't move. So channeling curly hair allows the hair just to breathe and allows it a little bit of short and long and some space. So that's all I'm doing. It's a very cool technique to see you used on curly hair. Yes, it's great on curly hair. Definitely. And so I'm just kind of feeling the angle, but I do have a connection point. I am connecting from that side. Obviously, the higher you go, the more length you're going to keep, the lower you go, the less you'll keep. So I'm leaving these pieces of hair out completely. Now, because I'm going diagonally that way, the shorter hair is going to push the longer hair across. So I will get a directional push from this side across to that side. Now, if your client wants to wear their hair the opposite way as well, then you can do exactly the same thing over again, but from the other side, right? This is great on guys' hair as well, if you've got guys with thick, wavy, curly hair. Again, when it sticks together, it needs some space to breathe. You see a lot of people doing this type of thing, but freehand, right? Yeah. You can do it wet, you can do it dry, whatever you wanna do. So what this is gonna do is leave me some longer hair and some density, but it's just gonna allow it to breathe a little bit more. Sorry, I'm talking, Brad, do you have some other questions? Um, we just have some hellos from Christopher Leon, James Elba. Hi, Christopher. Hi, James. Christopher's going to be here at Thrive soon. He's going to be here in a couple of weeks. Very exciting. All the way from... Hmm. Give me a second. Raleigh. Yes, got it. There you go. <laughs> Love uh, the shape. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Do you know what I'd really like to do on here as well? If I had the time, I don't have the time to set it properly, but I would do like a full finger wave on here. Do you know what I mean? And sit it under the dryer and all of that business. <coughs> a bit of fashion week in there. That would be super cool. So I'd kind of get that vibe going on, but obviously you guys would be extremely bored sat watching that dry for three hours. Christopher <laughs> can't wait. Oh yeah, I can't wait to see you. It's going to be amazing. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back through and I'm going to cut the longer pieces, right? So I went through this way and I cut it from short to long. So basically what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go vertically through the hair as if I was cross-checking from the back to the front. And I'm going to just come up and the longer hairs, so you'll see I've got shorter hairs and longer hairs. The longer hairs, I'm going to go past the shorter ones, and I'm going to cut another hair part on the longer ones. If you see what I mean. Okay? So I'm just going to come through with vertical sections now, and address those longer pieces of hair, and push and over-direct that hair across, and almost do a new um, guide or a new level. So I know this is a, a very interesting thing that's been happening recently, but we've got a lot of perms going on, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, I love perming hair. I know people know me mainly as a hair cutter, but I actually love doing hair color. I love doing perms. I nearly became a perma once because way back then they all used to do these amazing perm wines and you know, oh, I'm so exciting doing a perm next Tuesday on one of our house models. It's going to be amazing. I am so excited. Anyway, back to this. <laughs> How are we doing? That's great. Okay. So I've just been letting that um, back area dry on purpose so that I can go back around and do the outline. Just a little bit while I'm doing this back area. Okay, so back to the back area is almost dry. Now, obviously, many, many different options that we can do here. You can 100% go in, press it down, 
and go in and really kind of carve in something strong through there. Um, you could go in and keep it really loose and piecey and raw. Uh, honestly, there's no right or wrongs. I don't uh, believe in that. I think it depends on suitability, doesn't it? Your client, um, your hairline. I'm pressing this down again on purpose. I never press down a hairline, do I, Brad? Never. But I'm doing, I'm doing this on purpose because I want it to spring up. So even though it's strong, it has a softer quality to it. And again, obviously, that kind of neck hair, you can use a trimmer, you can use your scissors, whatever you want to do. So just take that fluffy hair off. Again, you can totally use a trimmer, whatever you want. This is just something that I am used to doing, is using my scissor person. Um, you know, you can leave something long in that middle area if you would like to. Again, this is your opportunity to design and do something for that client's neckline. Now, if someone has a, you know, a nice neckline, you want to show it off, then you can go higher to show it off. If you've got someone who maybe wants a little more coverage on their profile, then you would keep it lower, you know? I'm just spoiled with models like Mandy because she has a great hairline. Her hair is really nice to cut. Uh, I am lucky. We could leave that long bit as well, right? Yeah. Braid it, put some beads in it. Mm -hmm. What do you think? So I'm just taking that fluffy stuff off. Again, no one's saying you have to do this. You might prefer to do something softer. That's all good. I think once you know how to cut hair, it's like once you know how to color hair, then you have more choice, don't you? So it just gives you more opportunities to be able to do more and not just do the same three haircuts every day. Coming back through, doing a bit more freehand now as the hair is drying. As the hair is drying, I'm looking more at the silhouette. And so you can start to come in and do a little bit more freehand. Uh, I'm looking at the dark and the light so I can go in and just use the point of my scissors just to blend a bit of that. We have a question from Vicky Perez. Oh, uh, I love Vicky. Hi, Vicky. <laughs> She's asking, how do you de personally determine those longer lengths? Like, how do you want to leave them? Uh, on the top? Um, she didn't say, but I, I thought she was speaking yeah. about the top. So, um, if you're talking about the top, Vicky, the um, disconnections on the top area are really uh, decided by what you want it to look like at the end, right? Do you want to have longer hair at the front. If you do, you would need them longer. If you want it to be shorter, you would need them shorter. I know it seems like an obvious answer, but that's the truth. It's not anything more than that. So if you want it long in the front, you would go steeper with your angle. If you wanted it to be shorter in the front, then you could follow the head, or you could stay in more of a flat layer. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, she, that's, what, yep, okay. that's what she was looking for. Okay. Um, I don't like to do a lot of blow drying on here because I know it's boring. But I do need to dry this front area a little bit. I'll put a little bit of shine on. The key thing with uh, key thing with curly hair to me is when you put a product on, you need to make sure that you comb it through, and you also need to style it properly as well. Don't fluff the hair. I'm using the palms of my hands, and I'm bringing the hair down and sitting in the cuticle, get that product in, make sure you get all of the frizzy areas. So I'm kind of smoothing the hair. And then with a tight, and then again with a tight comb, what I'm doing is I'm gonna go through and actually comb the hair down, put it into place, make it sit down how I want it to. This has been bleached today. So you will find, and you can see the disconnections now. Yeah. You will find that it wants to be a bit frizzy, it wants to be a bit bigger. So I'm going through, I'm combing the product through. Again, you could go through and do some twisting, right? So make the hair a bit more finished, make it less frizzy if that's what the cuticle needs. So that's a really good thing to do is to comb it through and then actually set it. But the key thing to me is to stop it being so frizzy is to seal the cuticle by combing through the product. 
Sometimes on curly hair you feel like, oh, I'm combing the curl out, but it springs back up, but with a good finish, you know what I mean? And what product were you using again on me? I used the Shine. I love um, that stuff. Yeah, again, just so nice. Okay, so I don't want to get into a huge blow dry. I'm going to diffuse a little bit. So I hope you guys will indulge me for a second because I want to get it finished a bit nicer for you all. I think there's kind of a, like a, a 90s trend in at the moment, obviously, in fashion and stuff. If you look at hair in the 90s, people went very natural, um, a lot of disconnection. Uh, people were very concerned about what they were putting on their hair. It was a little bit grungy, right? Yeah. So we're seeing that, obviously, um, a lot in fashion, but also in hair at the moment. And there was a lot of simple haircuts. We're definitely seeing that come through a bit more. I'm just, you can see again my disconnections through here. And don't be always like making everything match. Everything doesn't have to balance. Every piece of hair doesn't have to be the same. Especially on curly hair, a bit of uh, like an erratic feeling is very attractive. Because curly hair is not the same every day, you know? Can I diffuse for a second? We have some love coming in about um, from Jennifer Shepley. Yes, She's hi. taken one of her classes before. That's so right. The Tucson. Best, yep, the best education class ever. Oh, that's so nice. Um, what I've thank you, Jenny. Um, what I've done is I've dried it with a diffuser. Now because I'm just on here and doing a bit more of an editorial look, 
then I'm actually taking the diffuser off on purpose so that I can just play around with the hair. And what this does is it separates it a little bit and stops it just looking so set together. So even though I did twist it, I'm trying to kind of get rid of it looking so set now. And I'm not using my hands, I'm just loosening the hair up. But I think this is still something you could do on curly head clients even in the salon. Lift up for me. diffuser bag. Um, it's titanium and the bottom of it is really really um, amazing because it doesn't let a lot of it does let a lot of air through but it's so diffused isn't it that you can actually put it on like high speed and high heat. I don't know if you do the diffuser. Um, okay. Okay. Oh, Wayne Woodruff is watching. Oh hello Wayne Woodruff my good friend. So I'm really into just kind of a bit bonkers mad um, curly hair that's not too done right now. Uh, can you stand up? Let's just pull this chair away. Put your feet on the table. <laughs> okay, can you stand up? Okay, so um, just doing a little bit of styling. Um, using some hairspray, farm hold hairspray. And uh, I just don't want to do too much to it, to be honest with you. Turn around. I kind of just like it. It doesn't need to be overdone. The shape's already there. The graduation is sat in. I have some longer and shorter pieces on here. So um, I'm just really liking what it looks like. Good. Do you like her outfit? She just, just wandered in here tonight with it on. <laughs> um, Wayne says looks great. Oh, thank you, Wayne. You always look great. <laughs> Uh, can I use that? Ruthie's loving the cut. Oh, yeah. Michael Lane. Hi, Michael. All of my wonderful SR team, right? Yeah. I just want to share this with you guys. I want to first of all say Happy New Year. Thank you so much for joining us. And also, um, I've been Sally Rogerson. I'm the owner of SR Education. We specialize in modern, um, you know, easy to understand affordable hair cutting classes. We also do color and lots of other things. But we have an amazing hair show coming up. This lineup is absolutely out of this world from photography to color to styling to hair cutting, social media, everything. So Thrive Sessions, you can go to thrivesessions.com or you can also go to sallyrogerson.com to find out more about our classes and what we do. This is my wonderful model, Mandy. What did we do here? We did some very classic graduation. I actually started it in the middle of the head, not in the nape. I took diagonal, vertical diagonal sections from this back into the front. I then went back down into the nape and sat it in, in there. Um, very simply worked into the top triangle. I cut from short to long. I did some channels, so I cut one, left one out, cut one, left one out. And then I also went back into the longer pieces and I recut those. Now, obviously, you can go and do some freehand and stuff if you want to, but I find that the disconnections, even though they're done technically, do enough for me. So um, uh, I think uh, it works really well. I'm really pleased with it. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, thank you all very much. I love cutting hair. I love what I do. I hope that you do too. And if you don't feel like that, all you've got to do is just get into a class. Thank you so much to Hairbrained, and I really, really appreciate it. And what was it? Hmm? Happy New Year. Oh, I said Happy New Year. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting lunch for my husband. Um, thank you very much, everyone, and uh, Happy New Year. All right, bye.